All right, they got Kendrick Perkins revealing why Kyrie Irving didn't want to be with LeBron James in Cleveland after LeBron said Kyrie hurt his feelings on Complex when the interview he did with Richard Jefferson. When Kyrie said he wasn't a clutch player, that basically said KD was the most clutch player that he played with. And LeBron said he hurt his, he hurt his feelings. Let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And make sure you check out the NBA Talk playlist for more videos like this. And like I said before, man, the NBA media ain't nothing but pro LeBron. The only LeBron naysayer is Skip Bayless. And people don't like Skip Bayless hating on LeBron because of the white and black thing. That's understandable. You can't watch, you know, ESPN or NBA TV or nothing without just them. Well, I can say NBA TV and, and the uh, TNT crew without them slobbering down LeBron James, right? It's all about LeBron, 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 LeBron. Like, damn, can he just be great and we just praise him for it? But Kendrick Perkins basically said that Kyrie was jealous of the special privileges that LeBron James got with Cleveland. And we knew for him to come back the second time, shit, he had special privileges the first time. He's definitely going to need special privileges the second time. And we knew that was the situation. Kyrie could be mad all he wants to. But then again, the Cavs was religiously in the lottery under Kyrie Irving and Deion Waiters. They was always in the lottery. So if Kyrie still was in Cleveland, they wasn't going to get over the hump. That's an actual fact, not with him. So LeBron came back and really elevated Cleveland and elevated Kyrie Irving over the hump. But basically... You know, LeBron being able to lose the team facility and his boys able to do what they want to do. And, you know, LeBron able to, you know, practice when he want to practice and not. Like, you got to earn those stripes. LeBron James took Cleveland Cavaliers the first time to the NBA Finals. You know, and then you got to remember he generated more money for Dan Gilbert than Dan Gilbert would probably ever make again with the Cleveland Cavaliers. So then again, what does Kyrie Irving did? He couldn't even get the Cavs to the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even play in the playoffs with Boston. He was always injured. So, I mean, how can you be jealous by a man that elevated you and took you on the stage and enabled you to hit that shot? I don't know, but we know Kyrie is just a weird guy. But what's even more weird is that how Kendra Parkins just keeps speaking on stuff that he don't need to speak on. Like, he was like, well, we let Ray Allen and Rondo fight it out in the locker room. Like, he just, like, the biggest whistleblower. And this is what happened when you enable guys who shouldn't even be on TV to be on TV. Telling everybody business and all the backstories when he just shut, he should just shut the fuck up. Honestly, let them work it out. If Le LeBron James spoke on, he was hurt with Kyrie. Said, okay, that's it. We don't need, you know, Kendrick Perkins to be Morgan Freeman and narrate the beef. That's all the media do is instigate beef. You know, at the end of the day, if they meet in the finals, it's just going to big it up even more because we know Kevin Durant went healthy as the best player in the league. People can try to fight it or not fight it. He hit the shot over LeBron two times. That's a fact. Back to back, and LeBron didn't want no parts of him. How can you be the best player in the league and you don't want and you don't want to guard the other best player's, uh, player? You know, and that's just the honest, honest opinion. But if they make it to the finals, then... Imagine what Kendrick Perkins and Brian Windhorst cocksucking ass and what all these dudes are, are going to say. There's going to be the probably the most viewed NBA Finals that LeBron has ever been a part of because the majority of them, you know, I'm talking about he was with uh, Cleveland and L.A. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody really care about them. Well, I don't say when he was getting his ass kicked in Cleveland, excuse me. Ain't nobody care about them Finals. Like he did $5 million last year. NFL pregame show on NBC did more than that. But if they can get Kyrie and Kevin Durant healthy, they get go against AD and LeBron in the finals. Shoot, it might not in a digital era. It might not break Michael Jordan's over thirty six million people watching his what his last finals versus the Utah Jazz. But damn near, it's gonna break modern day numbers. That can that's the best case scenario for the NBA is for LeBron to meet up with Kyrie and KD in the finals. And knowing how they cheat and how they get the refs to cheat, they can make it happen. But the NBA's biggest problem is parity. That's his biggest problem. People don't care for LeBron in the finals every year. People want parity. That's what makes the NFL better because you don't know either year who's going to make it. In the NBA, you know it's only a handful of teams. The L.A. teams, Denver. You know, we probably got more parity in the East. Milwaukee, I don't really like them. Miami, the bubble allowed them to go to the finals. 
I don't really think they contend. I think it'll boil down to Boston and Philadelphia because Boston got a coach. I mean, Philadelphia got a coach and Boston did better. And Brooklyn, I think it's the three teams if they healthy, it boiled down to. I really think it boiled down to those three teams this year. So it's six teams that got a realistic chance to win it. And think about it. It's not NFL where it's a high injury rate. Now, if KD don't come back healthy and he injured himself, obviously, you know, Brooklyn not there. But then again, Boston, they added Tristan Thompson in the middle. You got Jalen Brown and Tayson Tatum on the, on the wing. You got Kim, Kimball Walker. In actuality, they can try to trade for James Harden. If, you know, Danny Ainge got some picks, you can get rid of Kimball Walker and um and Marcus Smart and some of them young picks they got gone guys you got and trade them down to Houston and come out there with Brown and Tatum on the wing and James Harden at the point. It may work for them, but at the same time, you know, people people just tired of hearing the LeBron narrative. You know, it's a new narrative, even though it's LeBron and A D, but the beef between K D coming back trying to be the number one player and Kyrie issue with LeBron, you know, could you imagine ten seconds on the clock and LeBron checking Kyrie to win the finals and Kyrie shooting and bust his ass to win it. Can nobody say nothing? That's the best TV for the NBA. Well, that's the problem, man. We know as fans, 90%, 95% of the league don't have an opportunity to win a championship. You got superstar calls. Guys get away with travel. It's just atrocious. But then again, you also got to think about will Kyrie Irving be healthy enough? But that's really not an issue. If he's not healthy enough in Brooklyn, guess what? Spencer did with he. It's just as good coming off the bench. They went on a winning streak last year when Kyrie did that. And, and then again, Kyrie is just coming off as an asshole. You know, what he called the media Pons and Kevin Love responded back and say that, you know, basically Pons is degrading people. So what? Some of the media members are Pons. They're looking for stories and stuff of that nature, man. People just hate the real. I'm not a huge Kyrie fan, but they are Pons. Pushing narratives and all this other stuff. Like, man, I don't want to talk to media neither. Marshawn Lynch didn't want to talk to the media after they twisted his words up. But Kyrie has made himself the NBA's number one villain. What's so funny is, let's say Kyrie have, you know, passed away, you know, down the line. People are going to be dick sucking him. I seen people, what, what made me mad about Kobe is, I seen people that that rolled this man's name in the dirt. And I ain't even spoke on this. And I wasn't speaking on it during his death. But I've seen people ride Kobe name in the dirt. Oh, he dapped himself up. He's selfish. He the worst teammate. But what people didn't understand, when you push a narrative, Shaquille O'Neal had beef with the nicest guy in the NBA, Anthony Hardaway. People people, because people don't know basketball. He smacked Lil Penny off the couch. And Shaquille O'Neal was the real bad teammate. You know what I'm saying? He was the real raccoon. Shaquille O'Neal went with Papa John's after all that racial stuff. Shaquille O'Neal been bug dancing. You know, people forget that was an 18, 19-year-old Kobe. Shaquille O'Neal wasn't supposed to be fighting him. He was, he was jealous of him. Shaquille O'Neal is a big crybaby, man. His feelings always hurt. He's sensitive. Shaquille O'Neal was the bad teammate. How you beef with Penny? And many people talking about, well, Shaq carried the let I me mean, show me a championship with Shaq. Where Shaq didn't have a Dwayne Wade. Where Shaq didn't have a Kobe. We made it to the finals without, with a Penny. Get out of here. Sha- Shaquille O'Neal would have been nothing without Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant won the championship. He didn't have no another Shaq. Y'all want to say Paul Gasol? Paul Gasol wasn't nothing until he came to the Lakers. Lamar Odom was a dope fiend. Kobe did that. You know, and then again, the Lakers made the right choice. You kept Shaquille O'Neal. The Lakers wouldn't have won another championship. He got old quick, but then again, Kyrie is the new villain. And when I seen Kobe Bryant die and everybody showing this fake love, oh, I keep that same negative energy you had for him before he passed away. Who I love, nigga, you ain't love Kobe. You know what I'm saying? You ain't love Kobe. That's going to treat uh, Kyrie Irving. And, and one thing I mess with Kyrie Irving, he, he real about Thanksgiving. You know, he, he a little bit, you know, don't have no social skills, maybe because he lost his mom, but it is what it is. Everybody want to be the man. I ain't mad at it. But sometimes you got to just play your role. And I think Kyrie is just a Robin, you know. But, hey, that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Reach out if you have a business question, call, response, or video request. We also got a Facebook group. Want to make a donation? Cash app, CJ Good 313 That's in the description. PayPal link in the description. All my social media links there. Appreciate the love, support. Best way to donate is share, share the video. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Check out the NBA Talk playlist. And check out my other YouTube channel, Marcy Sports Talk. We gone.